The Grand Anse Turtle Watch project exemplifies the potential of community-based natural resource management as a successful form of sustainable development for rural communities in St. Lucia and beyond. Every year, the leatherback turtle makes a perilous journey halfway across the world in search of warm waters, safe havens to nest, lay their eggs, and give birth. Grand Anse Beach, located along St. Lucia's northeast coast, provides the ideal conditions for these migratory turtles, as it is the largest nesting site in the Eastern Caribbean. The Debara Sea Turtle Watch Group was officially launched in 2001, and prior to that, turtle watches were conducted on the Granans Beach by the St. Lucia Naturalist Society, and in, in collaboration with the Department of Fisheries and the Department of Forestry. This has now been turned over to the group through a co-management arrangement with the Department of Fisheries and the Debara Sea Turtle Watch Group. And they are able to participate in the conservation of sea turtles. They collect par parameters such as the length of the turtle, the width, the number of eggs laid, the time of arrival, the time of departure, and various other parameters. And we were able to use that information to enter it into a database to help us pull out information that can help us in the enhanced management of sea turtles. The whole concept of the whole group is to conserve this important resource. We know that from statistics, we know that um, the turtle, especially the back turtle population, is becoming extinct. And then we wanted to um, we wanted to conserve this resource so that maybe my children and your children will have this resource. If we have an organized tour where we actually watch everything that these creatures are doing, we'll, well, we may not completely eliminate the process of you know, what the human forces may do, but then at least bring it down to a minimum where whatever, from the time when we see these creatures, whatever we do, we, the, well, the most we can do is to ensure that they go back to the, to the water and, you know, with the intention that it will come back. The Grand Anse Turtle Watch Group was supported by the St. Lucia Heritage Tourism Project, by UNESCO's Youth Path, which is an acronym for Youth Poverty Alleviation Through Heritage Tourism. Um, the support was also given by Heritas, which is the Association of Site and Attraction Owners of St. Lucia. And in addition by Heritage Tours. Through time and oceans, I have traveled here to make this, here, my nesting place. Ready for birth, I burrow and sink my weary legs into the earth. I stake my future in this sand. I lay my dreams and wait for them to hatch. Total watching tours at Grand Dance are conducted from March through August for several days a week under the supervision of the Grand Dance Turtle Watch Group from the adjacent Debara community. These tours allow the community to earn income while actively participating in the conservation of the endangered leatherback turtle. It's an all night thing. You leave here 6 a.m. the following day. And when you come here, you, um, you are briefed on what is expected and what is not expected, how to use lights, the proper use of light. And then we have, we try to inculcate, um, you know, local things. So we have persons preparing food on the site, um, persons from the community preparing the food. And we do not have like those things you are accustomed to. We have our local dishes. And then whilst all of this is taking place, we have tour guides who will be monitoring the beach to see if anything has already come up. And um, if anything has not, then we know we talk to you, make it fun, make it a fun activity. And in the event that we do sit we have various um, activities that we do with them. Normally when we do a tour, we normally walk very close to the water's edge because it's easier to walk. And also it's easier to spot if a turtle is coming in because they would leave a very dark track coming out of the water's edge, going right up to the center of the beach. So we normally walk 
where the sun is firmer and easier to walk instead of walking into the soft sun. And normally the track will be darker in the wet area, so it's easier to spot in the wet area than on the dry sun. That's why you normally walk very close to the water's edge. What we have witnessed is that, first of all, that activity has created a form of employment for young persons in the Debawa area. We believe that if we can preserve our natural resources and utilize it in a sustainable manner, which the Debawa Turtle Group is, is presently doing, um, it will go a long way in we, as a government, as a ministry, meeting our, our objective and our, implementing our policies. It has made me and other members in our community. It, it makes us appreciate not only turtles, but our natural environment. We, 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 we have joined other environmentalist groups and then we have showed our support in whatever projects that they're doing. So it makes us appreciate our culture, appreciate our heritage and more, um, you know, young individuals who are aware and, you know, concerned about what we have, that kind of thing. You and I, we must coexist. So we walk together side by side. And when we gaze at each other through curious, guarded eyes, I am sometimes fortunate to see that sometimes we are in tune with the tides. For a small rural community such as Debara and for St. Lucia, this project epitomizes a groundbreaking model of sustainable community-based tourism through natural resource management. It allows residents to reap the economic benefits from the non-consumptive use of the leatherback turtle and creates an environmentally conservationist form of tourism for both locals and visitors. Ibarra, which is the community which is contiguous to the Granan's Turtle Watch project is perhaps one of the most remote communities of St. Lucia. The alternative to economic development in Debara would be migration out of Debara. What we're hoping that the Turtle Watch project and others which are similar would do would be to bring economic benefits and economic activities to those communities. What that does is to reduce on the migration patterns that the urban rural drift so to speak, um, which would happen in the absence of such um, activities. Many persons in our community have actually gained employment with um, this project. We have um, persons selling t-shirts. It actually gave them an extra thing to do. We have um, the t-shirt vendors, we have the caterers, we have craftsmen, persons who actually um, have drawing turtles with wood, out of wood, carving wood. And it's, so it's like when the guests come to our, our site, we give them something to go back with so that they can educate, not only um, in St. Lucia, but educate outsiders as to what we're doing here. So I believe that if we do these little, little tokens, they go by and say, oh, okay, I was at the Debra, I was at the Grand and Turtle Watch site. As St. Lucia continues to develop and expand its economic potential, Linkages between the tourism and agricultural sectors are being actively explored. The Grand Dance Turtle Watch project has been a pilot for successful, sustainable coastal resource management. Um, it demonstrates success in rural communities participating and taking ownership of a tourism product. It is an interesting and intriguing way to collect marine resource data and as a tourism product it helps diversify what we as a destination offer. Through these infinite ebbs and flows of time, I have unfortunately in my journeys suffered the evil intentions of hollow men with butcher's knives and hearts where I was once one of many millions just as me, I now am considerably reduced by the ever-present human wrath. For over 150 million years, the leatherback turtle has faced the vicissitudes of global climatic changes 
the environmental devastation of wars and the ever-present threat of extinction due to human activities. Nevertheless, the species has miraculously survived but faces a continuous danger of extinction due to illegal activities. We have had cases of illegal slaughter on that, on that beach as well as poaching happening on, on that Guarnan's beach. We are calling on the public to report any cases of people slaughtering turtles on, on the beach or collecting eggs. It is important to note that whether or not there is a sea turtle fishery, it is always illegal to have sea turtle eggs in your possession or to, to harvest them, to collect them, to sell them. And it is always illegal to interfere with a sea turtle that is nesting on a beach. We have found from experience that the people who engage in the slaughtering of turtles and the taking of eggs are not actually fishermen. Fishermen care about the sustainability of the fishery. It is their livelihoods for tomorrow. So you find that very, very often it is the people on the beach adjacent to the communities that actually engage in the slaughtering of the sea turtles on the beach and the taking of the eggs.